Hello everyone, uh, as you can see, we're out in the field at a beach. This is not just any beach. We are at the beautiful beach in Sri Lanka, in the southern province. Now, for anyone who's been particularly observant, you might have noticed that these waves, well, this beach, is a constructed beach. There's plenty of sediment here, and the waves seem to be bringing lots of material up. You can even see material in the waves as they're rushing up the beach. But we can also see over here that we've got a groin. So we know that there must be other processes operating here, probably long shore trips. What we're going to do today is instead of simply relying on observation, we're going to actually test, find out, get involved and see what is happening. And just over here, you can see a group of St. Christopher's students who are in a moment going to be completing a beach profile. Now a beach profile is a classic way to look at the shape of the beach and understand the dynamics of sediment movement, sediment transport, how the beach is formed. And that is what we're going to be talking you through today so that you know exactly what to do if a question about that comes up in paper four. Great stuff, let's go and see what they're up to. So, as you can see, there's a group of students behind me and they're getting ready to perform a beach survey. What that means is they're going to end up creating a profile of this beach. Now, what we need to do is find out exactly what they're doing, how they're doing it, and the equipment they're going to be using. And whilst they're being talked through it, we're going to now go and find out exactly what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be doing it, the equipment they're going to be using. Let's go. Okay, so we are about to begin beach profiles. And one of the key things in conducting a beach profile is equipment. And there are four main pieces of equipment that are essential for a beach profile. And the girls just beside me are going to talk about each piece of equipment and what they're going to use it for. So, tell us about this. These are flags. When we see up along the beach, we're going to place them each time we see a change in the gradient. Okay, so they're going to be used to mark change in the gradient as you go from the sea up to the top of the beach. Great. Uh, what about this piece? Uh, this is a ranging pole and we're going to use this on each of the flags. We'll start from the bottom on the first two and this is sort of the core to all of the rest of them and we'll measure from around this point here with the tape measure and the manometer just so that we have a better like view of the two different points and an easier place to um, sort of see where everything needs to be measured from. We need to make sure they're up straight and they're not too far into the ground because if they're too far into the ground on one and not enough on the other then it's going to give us an inaccurate result. Great, thank you. And last, well not last but not least, the penultimate piece of equipment is this, the tape measure. Tell us about yeah, it. So basically we use this to uh, measure the vertical distance of the beach um, and also we're going to be using it to measure long shore drift later on. Um, one limitation of this is just make sure, because it, it can get twisted really easily, so make sure it's just flat and also um, make sure that you're starting at zero um, and measure it to the nearest centimeter. What would happen if you had an obstacle in the way on the beach? Is there potential that that could be? Yeah, keeping? well, I mean, it depends. You would either go under it or above it, just to make sure it doesn't But keeping it straight. Yeah, keep yeah. it straight. Okay, okay, great. And last but, well, not least, the clinometer. Tell us about the clinometer. Okay, so this is used to measure the angle of the gradient. So you would take the two ranging poles and put this against the ranging pole at the red line, which Manny said earlier, and then you would aim it using your eye to the other red line and then you would see from here the um, angle at which the gradient is changing. But you need to make sure that you're holding it straight and you're focusing at the same point on both gradients. Brilliant girls, thank you. Four really critical pieces of equipment. Let's get to doing the beach profile. Okay, so as we said earlier, we're now creating a beach profile, looking at what the shape of this beach is like and then thinking about why. Now, as you can see, the boys here are in the process of completing a beach profile. Let's go and speak to them and see what they're doing and what type of equipment they're using. So, uh, Mish, what, what exactly are you doing here? Well, currently we're measuring the, the gradient and angle of the beach uh, rising. By doing this, we put some little flags over here. So you've got small flags, yeah, which um, you've been placing up the beach. Why have you been doing that? 
Well, we've been doing it to see the angle of which the, the times that angle has changed. So, for example, we put it over here where the water line is, so when the waves come in, uh, go over there. So, we put the flag in there, and then we move it over there where the, we see another coloration of sand, right, which shows the angle that it would be moving, moving up. Okay. So you've used the flags to identify places where the, the, the profile has changed, the yes. shape has changed, where the water has changed, and then you put these in. What uh, are these called? Uh, these are called ranging ranging poles. Yes. Ranging poles. Great, great. Um, um, and what are you using over here? Clinometer. Clinometer. Yeah. And then what are you doing with the clinometer? Well, I'm placing it on one of the colors here. Okay. And then using it to measure the angle. Right. Uh, it says the angle right here on the ground. Okay. So I have to look through this hole here and line it up with the other color change over there. And that will tell us the angle. Excellent. Okay, great. Good luck, boys. Doing beach profiles, and I'm just going to speak to the girls and see exactly what they're doing. We've already spoken to the boys. So, girls, what exactly are you doing at the moment? We are measuring the gradient of Range poles. Excellent. So you're measuring the angle of the beach using the kilometer, the ranging pole. And then okay. What are you doing? Are you recording that there? Recording it there. Okay. Great. Um, there's your fieldwork collection book. This. Um, girls, what exactly are you doing at this ranging pole? We are just making sure that it doesn't go any lower than the pole is over there. So they're both the same um, like length into the ground. Right, why are you doing that? Why are you making sure that you're not pushing this deeper in the ground? Because to accurately measure the gradient, they have to measure from the same red point on this pole. So if this pole is lower down, this point will be lower down, and then you won't get the accurate gradient. Right, you won't get fair test accurate, etc, etc, accurate measurement. What are these little flags for? This, we walked along the beach, and basically anywhere we felt we saw a gradient, we put a flag down. And then we took a, our, the bearings to make sure that there is a straight line right. and there are points from which we measure from. Excellent. And um, what are you doing with this, Maddie? Uh, well, we just finished with it, actually. We are just measuring the distance between the two points. Um, and that was just on the floor. So you're measuring the distance between the two poles? Yeah. And then with the kilometre and the angle, you can use a bit of mathematical Yeah, wizardry. so we're going to use trigonometry. Trigonometry. To work out for us. Perfect. When we get back. Perfect. Sounds good. We're now, as you see, at the upper part of the beach, top of the beach, um, and we're going to speak to the boys and see what they've been doing since we last spoke to them. So, um, boys, what are you doing? Can you update us on this profile? Well, we're at the end. Now that we're just placing the last ranging pole over there. Okay, so you've got That's your last the pole, the end of the beach. So that'll give us the entirety of the beach, the length of the entire beach. Okay. And the angles for every gradient of the beach. So everywhere there's been a change in slope, you've got that change in angle documented. Yeah. Are there any tips when you've been using this equipment? What have you been doing? Well, we need more than one person just to hold the pole straight and to use the kilometer so that uh, all the results are accurate. Okay. Um, uh, what about this tape? Is it being held tight, held taut? I can't give it up. Uh, yeah, we need it taut so we can get accurate. Measurements. Okay. Um, what about at the top here? Uh, what's your role been in this? We have to hold the ranging pole at the, at the top part and we have to hold the tape so that it's straight and we can measure accurately. Why would it be no good if the tape was not straight? Uh, there's, there's a lot of like, there's slack here. So slack now, why is that not good? Well, because that doesn't show the actual uh, distance between them. Okay. You pull it out straight to show the distance. It's about trying to be as accurate, uh, accurate yeah. as possible and actually get as close as possible to the true measurement of this, of this beach. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, boys. Okay, the boys are trying to do a final measurement of the beach from one end to the other. But one of the things that we have to look out for, this has got in the way, a piece of driftwood. And of course, it was right here and it was making this tape measure skew in. In other words, it wasn't straight. It wasn't going to become an accurate measurement they take taken the measurement from this. So I'm moving that drifted out of the way and as you can see now they're making sure that the tape measure from one end of the beach to the other is tall. This is the critical reason why students must work together as a team. It's to enable it to become a 
much more accurate way of measuring the beach profile. And it also makes it easier. You can't possibly do this on your own. So the importance of teamwork is twofold. First of all, to make it easier. Secondly, to make it more accurate because of things like we just mentioned, the driftwood. And finally, of course, working in a team is safer. Okay, so having completed beach profiles, something else that's really, really important, interesting, and a key part of the coastal processes is looking at the current. How is material being transported? A key process at the beach is transportation. And as you can see, just behind me here, the boys are looking at the currents. They are measuring, recording, using a tennis ball to look at how things might be transported by the waves and the currents that are operating uh, at this beach. Of course, we know we've got a groin at the other end of this beach. We think Longshore Drift is operating. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go out now and see what the boys are up to, why they're measuring this, and what they're hoping to find out. Let's go and have a look. So we're here in the water. Nothing like getting into the water and actually doing some geography. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Come over and uh, just explain, because we can't go too much further into the water. Uh, we're measuring long story drift right now. So we're dropping a boat on the water. Right. And we're seeing how far it goes in one minute. So we're measuring the angle and the uh, distance. Perfect. So one minute, we've got a stopwatch being used by the boys. We've got a tape measure, a float, a tennis ball so it can be seen. And we're measuring how far it goes, the angle and direction it's moving in one minute. Gate, timing, working as a team, etc. all very important. 